next is neck brushing. This helps to release some of the tension. You just take the back of your hands and brush up your neck. Inhale as you bring your hands in to your collarbones and exhale as you flick away the negative energy. Hi, welcome. My name is Brendan Wilbur. I'm the Community Programs Manager at Alternatives Federal Credit Union. And that means I get to talk to people about money and finances for a living. I teach some financial education courses here, but I also do one-on-one -on -one financial counseling and credit counseling where I sit down with individuals and families and talk to them about how to empower themselves financially and how to get out of life what they really want. Most of us weren't given an instruction manual. We weren't taught by our parents. We weren't educated in school how we could have a positive, healthy relationship with money. My job is to help you figure out how to create that relationship as an adult, how to have meaningful conversations with your partner, how to figure out how to manage money for yourself, and how to start to build wealth for yourself. What I see when I work with people, talking about financial wellness, talking about financial health, I see a lot of shame and a lot of guilt around where they're at. And this comes from not having an understanding of where their money goes. It comes from not knowing what's enough. How much do I need and actually to, in order to live, to meet my needs? So one thing that I really like to, to get people to work on is looking at these numbers. Because the numbers don't have emotions attached to them. The numbers are, are there regardless of whether we're writing them down or we're adding them up. They are our guide and they tell us are we building a positive financial future or are we spending more than what we, we currently make? Take a quick break. It is a great passion of mine to share with others the practice of sacred chant, also known as ecstatic chant, because it brings on a sense of joy and euphoria for those who practice it. Everything is energy, your body, your thoughts, and every spiritual resonance that exists in and around you is a vibrating wave of light. At Yoga Farm, we teach practices and tools that help our students and clients love and live in a healthy body, um, experience kindness of their mind, and to feel the rapture of being alive in their soul. And along the way, our students cultivate the garden of their life. I'm an acupuncturist specializing in Nate and Nambuja Pod's allergy elimination technique. Acupuncture has been used for thousands of years for the treatment of just about anything. I'm an essential oils consultant and coach, and I teach about using very high-grade therapeutic essential oils for health and wellness. Unfortunately, we're able to make really large financial mistakes these days. So people come in wanting to know, are they on the right track? What's preventing us from getting what we really want? Generally, it's emotions that are getting in our way. We track our expenses, and we start to have plans and goals about how we're going to move forward. These are things that I help people do through simple Love your body, take control of your time, steward your finances, tune into your intuition, balance your mind, and calm your emotions. Teaching Ithaca Wellness. What I see when I work with people, talking about financial wellness, talking about financial health, I see a lot of shame and a lot of guilt around where they're at. Are we building a positive financial future or are we spending more than what we, we currently make? And it's okay sometimes if you're spending more than what you make, if that's what is important for you in that moment. An example would be if you look at a family and they decided they're gonna work less so they could spend more time with their kids during a, a, a crucial time in that child's development, but they're gonna create debt during that time period, that's okay if it's in line with their values and the values of spending time with their kids. What they know that they're gonna be able to get out of that debt when the kids are a little bit older and they go back to working 
more hours. That's an example of looking at your values and getting rid of some of the guilt and baggage that goes around with your finances. What else do we see around those emotions? Because the emotions are what really drives a lot of our spending and drives a lot of us to feelings of inadequacy around money. So hopefully over the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna be able to give you some strategies and tools that are simple things you can do to look at how do I build wealth? What are my values around money? And how do I motivate myself to make these changes? My name is Brendan Wilbur. I'm a certified financial counselor here at Alternative Federal Credit Union. And one of my goals is to help people figure out what they cost. Once we know what you cost and where your money goes, then we can start to talk about what you value and what you really want in this world. What's preventing us from getting what we really want? Generally, it's habits and it's emotions that are getting in our way. That inadequacy comes from not a general understanding. A lot of terms are thrown out there, a lot of ideas are thrown out there, but we don't get a lot of training or education on these things. My parents are awesome at money. They did not talk to me about any of it growing up. They didn't give me examples of how to save, examples how to pay bills or manage my finances. It was more along the lines of, just go out there and you'll figure it out. Most people come to see me because they haven't gotten any financial education. They haven't gotten any knowledge from their parents from the school system, they're kind of just allowed to go out in the world as adults and make financial mistake. So how do we get away from that? We look at where our money goes, we track our expenses, and we start to have plans and goals about how we're gonna move forward. These are things that I help people do through simple, bite-sized pieces that people can get their head around. Unfortunately, we're able to make really large financial mistakes these days. So people come in wanting to know, are they on the right track? Are they doing the right things? Um, what are better things they can be doing to focus their time and energy on to feel like they're empowered financially? So what we do is we look at goals. We look at where your money goes. We look at how can you start to build the pieces towards what you really want and direct your money towards what your values are. These days we can get into a lot more problems than what our parents could get into. We have such easy access to credit, predatory lending, that it puts us in situations that are not so easy to get out of. We're also advertised to all the time. Everything is for sale and everyone wants our money. So how do we start to look at these things and say, how do I have a better positive financial relationship with money? How do I start to feel financially well? And really it's identifying what are the things that are most important to you and what do you want out of this world? And knowing there's not one day where the financial gene is gonna kick in. Now I can manage money. It's really just a habit and it's a skill. It's much like riding a bike, driving a car, reading, writing. These are things that we get better at the more that we do. And with managing money, with a few simple tricks and a few simple habits that are positive, we can start to really look at what are the things that are most important to me. The emotions, we'll come back to this over and over again. And trust me, I'm an emotional spender. I used to spend money because it would make me feel good in that moment. The problem with that is, it brings on guilt and shame later when I didn't have enough money for the things that truly were important or I valued in my life. I'm not saying we don't spend money. We live in a society where we need to spend money on a daily basis, really. So we look at how can I spend money on things that meet what my values are and what I really need, and how can I not beat myself up for not feeling like I have enough sometimes? Because we also don't earn enough in a lot of ways to afford what life should be around here. The cost of housing, the cost of food, we have high costs, but we don't have high wages in this area. And this is not just for Ithaca, this is endemic for our entire country. We're doing, we're trying to do as much as what our parents did with money, but we have less money to actually work with. We're working more to have less. So how do we look at this and say, I want to have a positive relationship and I want to feel well around my finances? Really, it comes down to what do I want? What's important to me and what am I willing to stop doing in order to get that? What am I willing to do more of in order to get what I truly, truly want? If that's a vacation, if that's you want to retire early, if it's that you want to be able to buy gifts for your friends and family, these are all okay. These are your dreams. And if they're your dreams, it's important that we figure out how do you make them happen? And how do we make them happen? Are we start to have those goals we start to look at what our values are, and we start to make sure that our money is going towards those things. And what we realize while we're tracking is that we do lots of things that divert us from getting what we've really deemed we want. 
Now, for myself, as I look at where my money goes, um, I did not want to track what I spent on alcohol for seven years. I would just put it in my grocery budget. Why? Because I didn't want to look at it. It was a tough choice. I looked at all of my spending, but I didn't want to look at this one piece because I didn't want to be honest with myself in that regard. I do this for a living and I still didn't want to do it. At the end of seven years, I decided I started to want to look at it. And when I started looking at it, I realized it wasn't productive and it wasn't the money that I really wanted to be spending on that. And I had to change that relationship. You'll come to these as you spend time and energy looking at them and looking at yourself and saying, what is it that I really want? And if you really want that cup of coffee every morning, great. But what are you willing to give up in order to make it so you can still have that? Because if that's the most important thing to you, that's great. But something else is not going to happen now. And here's the great thing about money. It doesn't matter what my goals are or what anyone else's goals are. It really matters what you want out of this world and what's important to you. It doesn't matter what products that you have or what car you have or what phone or any of that. What matters are what do you want and what's going to bring you happiness. And how do we define that? How do we write it down? And how do we start to move towards those things with positive momentum by using tools like tracking, goals, and also looking at our expected expenses and saying, how are these things going to help empower me towards having a positive financial relationship, not only with myself, but with others? Wealth. That's one of those words that we hear, but I don't think we all know what it really means. Wealth is when we're starting to save our own money. Whenever we spend money, that means we're starting to build wealth for somebody else. What I want is for us to figure out how to start to build wealth for ourselves. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to know where does our money go? This comes down to tracking. What I use, I use a simple checkbook register. And I use these because one, they're free, and I also fit really easily in my pocket. When I spend money, I simply write it down in here. As you can see, I've spent lots of money lots of tracking that I have on here. And this isn't so I can feel bad or I can judge myself on where my money's going. It's simply so I know where is my money going. Because I can't make decisions about what I want to do or where I want money to go if I don't know what's currently happening. Many folks who I meet with say, it's too painful to look at it. I, I, I'll be ashamed, I'll feel bad. And I say, the numbers are there regardless of whether we look at them. So really, we're just being honest with ourselves. And by being honest with ourselves, we can start to see, is our money going towards things that we value? What are our values? A lot of us can pinpoint what our values are in this world, but they don't always reflect on where we spend or how we manage our money. So one of the first exercises I'd ask you to do is, write down, what are your values? What's important to you? Now as we look at where our money's going, we can see if it balances out with what our values are. If it does, great. We're already doing an effective job on spending our money in a way that coincides or relates to our values. If it's not, that means that we're unconsciously spending money on things that are building wealth for someone that doesn't agree with what our value system is. And don't worry, this happens to all of us because spending money is so easy and everyone is trying to get access to your money. That's why we're advertised to on a daily basis. That's why you feel like you need to have that new phone, that new equipment, because we're being bombarded with advertisements and it's being told us that we should have those things. But really, what we want to do is figure out what brings us happiness, what are our values, and how do we start to build wealth for ourselves. I will tell you, there's no booklet that I can give you. There's no just do this and you'll be good with money. It's really a matter of figuring out what works for you. How are you brought up? What are your emotions around money? And what do you need to be looking at when it comes to you building that positive wealth for yourself? Because it's going to be different for every person that's out there. All right, so tracking, biggest piece that we can work on. If you don't know where your money goes, you really don't know how to change what you have spending. This is the old school way of doing it, writing it down. I still do this. I get that spending and I have to think about it. It's not an unconscious experiment of me just spending the money. I'm thinking about, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy something and I have to write it down. Sometimes that makes me change my mind. It says I don't really value this. And by writing it down, I realize it's not that important for me. 
I want to be organized around these numbers. So we want to find some kind of way to get organized, whether that's you using Excel, one of your financial institutions reporting features. Here at Alternatives, I can track all of my spending right online and I can organize it into some really great graphs, some charts, and show me whether I'm building wealth for myself or not. That is the key. How do you find that way of making yourself organized and taking the work off of your own plate? Now, if you want to sit in your living room on the floor and do it with pencil and paper, fantastic. But if you don't have time, we want to find the right tool for you. There's a, a, a tool called Mint. I love it. Mint.com is a great one to use. I really prefer using the alternatives one because this is where I do my banking. But you want to find the one that works for you. All right. That being said, when I know where my money's going, now I can look at is it going towards things that bring me joy, that meet up with my values, and are important to me. Well, how do I know what I really want unless I start to identify them? We want to identify some goals for ourselves. And I'm going to give you an acronym, and it's going to be SMART goals. Doesn't mean there's any such thing as dumb goals. SMART goals simply gives us a way of tracking what we're going after. We want it to be specific. We want it to be measurable. We want it to be attainable relevant to where we are in our life and most importantly we want it to be time bound. We want our goal to have a time frame that we can actually meet. So let's practice one of these and kind of see what it would look like. A lot of folks who come in and see me haven't established a savings account or a savings history. They haven't started to have their own emergency fund. So one of the first goals we might have are can we come up with an emergency fund? Financial counselors like myself say you should have six to eight months in an emergency fund of your expenses. I don't think this is a realistic goal for us to be setting. I don't think it's relevant to where many, where many of us are in our lives. So I say, how about $500 to $1,000 that we start with? We're going to use the number $500. We're going to label it as an emergency fund. And now I want to get specific about what's an emergency for me. What does that mean? Is this money there if a great pair of shoes is on sale? Is it there if I really want to go to a concert? No. The emergency is going to be if there's a loss of income if there's a sickness in the family. I don't even have car repair or things like that listed in my, under my emergency funds. This is more big life emergencies where I need to travel to go see someone. This is there's been a loss of income. It's a smaller amount, but I have parameters around how I'm going to save this money or why I want to keep it aside. So we want to be specific about how much. We want to be specific about what it's for, emergency. Now we also want to talk about what that emergency is going to be for us. Now for it to be measurable, we want to have a combination of the time and how much we want to be saving each month. So for the sake of math, I'm going to make this a five month goal. That means I need to save $100 a month, $25 a week, $3.50 a day. So now I have measurable and time bound. I know how much time I need in order to make this goal work. I can measure if I'm moving towards this goal by saying that I save $25 this week and I have a way of making it accountable to myself. Now, through looking at the rest of my spending, I might find out that this is not attainable. I don't have 25 extra dollars a week right now that I can be saving. So are there other ways that I might be able to bring this money in? Maybe I can babysit. Babysitting I bring up because it's something that a lot of us can do. And if we were to babysit, we're looking at maybe two, three hours a week and we'd be able to meet this goal. We're not changing our spending. We're not changing our habits. We're simply finding additional ways to bring in money so we can meet this goal. Is it relevant? Yeah, I want to have my own financial security blanket. I want to feel like I can take care of my, myself and my family. I'm not relying on creditors or other family members or friends to help get me out of a bad situation. So it's relevant to where I'm at. It's relevant to where a lot of people are that I meet with. Again, time bound. I have that five months. If I save $25 a week, I'll have my money within five months time. $3.50 a day, why do I break it down to the daily amount? Well, this right here looks like a cup of coffee. This is a cup of coffee over at Gimme or Starbucks. If this is one habit that I'm saying, I'd be willing to change that for a short period of time so I have this security blanket, you might say, oh, that might be my cup of coffee or that might be packing my lunch, that might be walking instead of riding um, or driving my car. This could be, I'm, I'm not going to go shopping this week. It's finding what does this represent for you. And now we're starting to build our own wealth. And this is a small example, but if we don't start with something small, it's hard to dream about those larger ones. So what I want people to do is, I want you to try to work on two goals here. 
I've, I've labeled a short-term goal. Short-term we're going to call anywhere from three to six months and I'd like to look at a midterm, 12 to 24 months. I think it's important that you not only have one goal, but you have a couple goals that you're working on at any point in time. The other thing that's also really important with this is writing them down. Many folks that I meet with say, oh Brendan, I have financial goals. And I say, really, are they written down? And they say, no, 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 they're in my head. And what happens are we have these great ideas in our head and they get lost and we don't find ourselves being accountable to ourselves with it. So I'm going to challenge you to come up with two financial goals, a short term, three to six month and a, and a midterm goal, 12 to 24 months. Some of the clients I work with want to look at a longer term goal and that's five plus years. I find it really hard for our brains to conceptualize a time so far away. So I, I prefer the shorter term goals, the short and the midterm goals. They're exciting, they're things that we're working toor towards in the near future and they're easy for our brain to grasp. So two goals to work on using the smart example of specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. That's the first tool besides tracking that I really think can be beneficial. All right, now I'm going to move on to the next tool that we can work with. This is probably the thing that's helped me out the most in my financial life and I remember learning about this in a class that we teach here at Alternatives called Money Wise. Uh, Co-facilitator of mine, Joe Cummins, he wrote this on the board and it helped transform my life. <laughs> unexpected expenses. When I saw this, it rang really true to me. I was like, yeah, I have unexpected expenses. These are the things that mess me up. These are the things that when they happen, cause me financial pain. They're the ones that make me feel like I don't make enough money, I'm stressed financially, and they make it hard for me to rebound from. And they also can create debt. So Joe, when he wrote these on the board, he said, let's brainstorm what they are. Came up with things like car repair, vet bills, holidays, travel, weddings, gifts, medical, etc. The list goes on and on when we think about unexpected expenses. How does just writing them out start to change our perception of what these are? Now that we've written them out and we've started to look at them, we can expect these things to happen. There's never been a car that doesn't need repair. They always need repair. If we start putting money aside for them before it happens, we can start to have some financial security for ourselves. Gifts. I used to be surprised every year around December 25th because it was Christmas came up and it happens every year at the same time but I never planned for it and it would throw me into a loop. My wife and I would sit down, we would do a financial plan for the holidays and it was based on our feelings, not based on what we actually had. We would write everyone's name down on a list, we would assign dollar amounts to those people's names and then we would add it up. And it wasn't based on what was in our bank account or what we could actually do, it was based on what our feelings were and what we thought we should do. By starting to expect these things to happen, now we started to plan for them. And when we first did this, we had about 10 different things that we wanted to save for that we knew were going to happen throughout the year, but we didn't know how much they were going to cost. So we started envelopes. We put envelopes um, at home. We also started doing more savings accounts at the credit union. So here we'll allow you to have as many savings accounts as you want. And at one point in time I had around 10. That to me became a little too much to manage. I was borrowing from one to, to fund the other and I had IOUs in them. So I broke them down to really two categories. Some of these make me happy, some of these make me sad. I simply now have a happy and a sad savings account. Every time I get paid, a little bit of money goes here and a little bit of money goes here. This means I have less money to spend in the moment, but it also means when these things happen, I'll have money to work with. These are simply savings accounts that I'm putting money aside so I can't spend it now so I'll have it for later. Now when my car needs repair and the bill's $500 and my SAD account only has $300 in it, that's okay. I'm $300 closer to that bill than I would have been if I hadn't started saving. What's also happened is when the happy account, when I look at it, when the holidays come up, my wife and I start with this number now. We don't start with our feelings, we write down the number first and then we say how are we going to make this number work for our family. It's also the same with traveling. Now when we go on vacations, we're using what we've saved, what we've been able to put aside. And this is us building wealth for ourselves because now we're not creating debt when these things start to happen in our life. Simple process, not complicated, easy to get started. Here's the best part of this. No one's ever come back to me and said, hey Brendan, I really wished I wouldn't have saved money. 
How many times in our life have we said, I wish I wouldn't have spent that money? It happens every day. But saving, all we've done is given ourselves another opportunity for another day. By putting it aside, if we accidentally save too much money, we can still take it back. It's still there. But when we spend too much money, that opportunity is gone. So when I look at these accounts, what I look at is opportunity, and that's what I've created for myself. Don't get hung up on what's the magic number. How much should I be saving? Really, it all depends on the individual, how old your car is, how old your pets are. Really depends on your situation. But if you don't start saving, these things aren't gonna magically take care of themselves. So starting these habits, and really, all financial wellness is about creating positive habits for ourselves. So the habit of saving money is where we start to build the wealth, and it's where we start to build some financial security for ourselves. The goals is where we start to build the habit of what are we saving money for? What, is, what are we motivated by? What is getting us excited to put money aside, get up and go to work every day so we have some of that money for the things that we've identified are really important to us? And if we don't do these things, it's really easy to just kind of float through life waiting for the right opportunities to happen for us financially when really if we start to create them, that's when we start to get what we really want. And this works regardless of whether you're making $10 an hour or you're making $50 an hour. If we don't create the habits, we don't get what we want. And I have the same issues with people who come in who are making below the poverty line with people who are making over six figures a year. If they don't have a way of limiting what they spend and identifying what's important to them through goals, then really we have a really difficult time with getting what we want out of this world. So a challenge that I'm gonna give you, I don't want you spending hours every day looking at your financial situation. I think 30 minutes a week is plenty. So I'm gonna challenge you to find one day a week where you have 30 minutes. You put on an egg timer and you start to work on some financial goals for yourself. You start to look at where your spending's going and you start to say, what is it that I really want in this world? And if you haven't met with a financial counselor, I'd say this is a great opportunity to do that. It's free to come down to Alternative Federal Credit Union and meet with me. Um, my contact information will be shared later, but you can simply give me a call or an email and set up an appointment. I'd love to sit down with you and do financial planning, financial goal setting, and look at how to empower you around your own finances. I talk to others about my situation because I also want to feel financially empowered. And I've gotten these skills through talking to individuals and people who have the knowledge. When I told my mom I was going to be doing financial counseling years ago, she said, Brendan, you're terrible with money. And I said, Mom, it's not that I'm terrible with money, it's no one ever gave me the skills or the tools in order to feel successful around money. And to feel successful around money, we need skills, we need tools. next week on Teaching Ithaca Wellness. Uh, one tip that I like to share with healthy eating is to make conscious, informed choices about what to eat. And one way to do that is to read nutrition labels. And a lot of people don't do this. I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration today. And we're going to talk a little bit about the nutrition label. So this is a common product. It's the instant oatmeal packets. This is apple cinnamon flavored. A lot of people use these. These are very convenient and fast for an instant breakfast in the morning. And we're gonna take a little bit of a look at this product today. I look on the box and I see it says heart healthy. It has four grams of fiber, which I like. It's got some iron and it's got 26 grams of whole grains. It all sounds pretty good. And then I, I flip it over and I take a look at the nutrition label. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here. So I'm looking at it, it looks like it has, a, it has a good number of vitamins. It's got some riboflavin, niacin, calcium, vitamin A, folic acid. There are a number of good things about this product.